Hey guys, wanted to jump on here this morning just to, again, give you a quick reminder. Make sure you click that little subscribe button on the bottom of your screen if you want to stay up to date with any current content, any new videos that are being posted. And then again, if this video or any of these videos bless your life, please make sure that you um, invite others to this channel. Uh, repost this either to your Facebook page or send it as a text message. Share the word and let's see if we could get more people watching these videos. Today, I would like to talk to you about the church. I'd like to talk to you about the church. And when I say the word church, I'm not, um, I'm not referencing my own personal church or my own personal ministry. But when I say the church, I'm talking about the church globally. I'm talking about the church that was created by God and His followers, His um, early disciples. The church um, experiences a lot of difficulty today. We have to um, accept the attacks from, uh, from the media, from uh, online trollers. We have to take the attacks of those who maybe were possibly hurt by leadership or a ministry or maybe a Christian that attended a certain fellowship or a church and and because they did that to you now you have a sour taste in your mouth about church about the church it's kind of like throwing the baby out with the bath water I'm here to tell you that there is no perfect church in fact uh, there is not a perfect church that exists here on this earth there is no perfect Christian um, the only place that there will be perfection, sinless perfection, will be in heaven when we are spending all eternity with our Creator, with our God, with Jesus Christ. So I'd like to talk about these three points today. And this is kind of a, kind of a quick summary uh, based on a few recent conversations that I have had with people about the church. So let me give you these three points, okay? Point number one, the church was founded on Jesus Christ. The church was founded on Jesus Christ. And uh, the scripture that I'm quoting from is found in Matthew chapter 16, verses 13 through 20. That's where you find the whole conversation. This is where Peter confesses that Jesus is the Christ and they're having this conversation. And then in verse 18... Uh, uh, Jesus says, and I also say to you, he's talking to Peter, and I also say to you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades shall not prevail against it. So here he's sort of challenging Peter. Now, when we read this verse, this verse has been taken out of context many times, uh, even by some different denominations. Um, in referencing Peter as sometimes being the very first pastor or the very first pope. Um, did I say pope or pope? Pope. Um, but when you look it up in the Greek language, it will read like this. And I also say to you that you are Peter, meaning little rock. And on this rock, which means big rock, I will build my church and the gates of Hades shall not prevail against it. It is not, Jesus is not saying that the church is built on Peter. It's not built on Peter because Peter's a little rock. He says, on this rock, this big rock, this rock of ages, I'm going to build my church. So, the church should not be built on a man. The church should not be built on a ministry. The church should not be built on a methodology. It must be built on Jesus Christ. Listen, the, the church was built on Jesus Christ, right? It was created by Jesus Christ. It was um, initiated by Jesus Christ. You know, God is the one that initiates the love relationship. He, We love him because he first loved us. John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. So the church was built 
on Jesus Christ. So if you've been hurt by the church, if you've been offended by the church, just remember that it is Jesus Christ who built the church. If you are a follower of Jesus Christ, then you are a part of his church. And he is the only one that's perfect. Okay, so that's point number one. The church was founded on Jesus Christ. The second point, number two, the church's outreach is the Great Commission. The church's outreach is the Great Commission. Now we find this, well, we find this at the end of Matthew's gospel, first of all. Uh, when it says, Jesus says, Go therefore and make all disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. But then when you turn over to Mark's gospel, he takes a, a little different take on the Great Commission. And uh, Mark 16, it's found in Mark 16 verses 14 through 18, but the key verse is found in verse 15, where he tells them, Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Go and preach the gospel to every creature. So that's the commission, right? The disciples, the 12 disciples, are told to go and preach the gospel. Go and make disciples. Go and take this message out to everywhere, to everyone. The The church should not miss this very important point and. and you know, if a church is not doing this, if a church is not a part of the Great Commission, then they are missing the entire point of, of making disciples and they're missing the entire point of our universal outreach. So the church must not miss, uh, first of all, preaching the gospel. Uh, secondly, making disciples. And then thirdly, baptizing people. You know, a biblical church, a powerful church, a church that is being used by God should be preaching the gospel, making disciples, and baptizing people. So wherever you go, make sure that your church is doing that. The church should do its job. It needs to fulfill this mission. And then the last thing, number three, and uh, these are only three points. I'm sure there's very there's much more. Uh, about the church, but I just narrowed it down to three important ingredients. Uh, point number three is the church's duty is to equip the saints. The church's duty is to equip the saints. And we find that one in Ephesians chapter 4, verses 11 through 13. This whole section is talking about spiritual gifts. It says, And he himself gave some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers. And then it really jumps out. The mission is found in verse 12, where it says, it gives us the why. Verse 12 says, For the equipping of the saints for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. So why are people given gifts? Why does the Lord call some to be teachers, to be preachers, to be Sunday school leaders, to be worship ministers, to be ushers, to be counselors, to be greeters, to be custodians. Why does God call all these people? I mean, what's the purpose? You know, what, what, how do we train these folks? What should we do? We gather them together, we bring them together, and it is our job as a church to uh, equip these saints for the work of the ministry for the edifying of the body of Christ. So we have to teach them to observe all things that God commanded us, that Jesus taught us. Um, we are to train lay people for leadership. We are to train them for ministry. And, and how do we train them? We train them with this, the B-I-B-L-E. Yes, that's the book for me. I stand alone on the word of God, the B-I-B-L-E. I like to say it's our basic instructions before leaving earth. Dwight L. Moody used to say, this book will keep you from sin, and sin will keep you from this book. So the church's duty is not to let its people just sit, right? We don't show up every week for a service and just sit there and just eat the Word of God and do absolutely nothing. If we do that, we're going to become a stagnant church. We're going to become gluttons. It's not enough just to eat. We have to work these things out. Even Paul, when he was writing to the Philippians, told them to work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. 
He wasn't saying that you work for salvation, but he was saying you got to work this thing out. Salvation is a free gift, but you got to do your part also. You got to have some good works. Uh, the church's duty is also to not uh, leave the people unprepared for ministry. That's the greatest crisis crisis in a church is to not prepare the people. To not prepare the people for the work of the ministry. We have to prepare our people. The shepherding of the church, yes, is done by the lead pastor. But guess what? The shepherding and the tending of the flock is also done by lay people. By mature Christians who are reading the word. Who are studying to show themselves approved. Who are taking in the scriptures and are true disciples. And are sharing with the whole congregation. Uh, the church's duty is also not to grow in number, but not in its actual spiritual growth. So it's not just a numbers game. Yes, it's great if a church is growing numerically, but it's even greater when there is a quality of that growth. When we see uh, church members maturing into godly individuals, spiritual people, the church must be a teaching facility. And it's not to teach man's wisdom. The teaching facility involves the expounding on the Holy Scriptures. A couple of verses you could think about in order to do this. Um, Psalm chapter 1 says, Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the seat of, of sinners, but or sits in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law he meditates day and night. He should be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. That brings forth its fruit in due season. Whose leaf also shall not wither. So blessed is that man who is reading the word. Who is taking in the scriptures. He's going to have phenomenal growth. 2 Timothy 3.16 7 and 17 says all scripture is God breathed. Useful for teaching, for rebuking, for correcting. For training in righteousness. So that the man of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. And then also Hebrews 4.12 talks about the word of God being Sharper than any two-edged sword. It's our offensive weapon. When we think of the shield of, uh, when we think of the armor of God, it's not enough to just have the shield of faith, the belt of truth, the helmet of salvation, uh, the breastplate of righteousness. You have to have the sword of the spirit. You have to have God's word if you're going to have a victorious Christian life. Hey, listen. I hope you got a little value from this today. If this blessed you, please make sure you share this. Uh, have a wonderful day. God bless you. Take care. Bye-bye.